So I was walking in the woods the other day, and I found these huge Ganoderma mushrooms. Uh, so I cut them off of the tree that they were growing on, and I made them into a shelf. Uh, so I thought I would make a video today telling you about these mushrooms. So the Latin name for this species is Ganoderma apelantum. Gano roughly translates to lustrous, and derma means skin, so Ganoderma means lustrous skin, which is a quite fitting name. You can see that the, the top of this fungus you know, does take the light quite well. Uh, the species name apelantum means flat, which makes sense because Ganoderma apelantum is a polypore or a shelf fungus, which is, you know, why I made a shelf. So to get a sense of where polypores fit into the rest of the fungal kingdom, here's a quick lesson in mushroom phylogeny. All fungi are multicellular eukaryotes. If you don't know what a eukaryote is, you can check out my video on endosymbiosis. There are a number of different fungal phyla, but for our purposes, the most important distinction to keep track of is the difference between molds and mushrooms. Both molds and mushrooms are decomposers. That is, they externally break down and digest whatever it is they're growing on. However, the reproductive habits of molds and mushrooms are quite distinct, and that's what makes them different groups. Molds, like the gray stuff that grows on strawberries, are comparatively simple and don't produce very large fruiting bodies. In contrast, mushrooms produce very sophisticated fruiting bodies that release spores. This fruiting body is what we typically think of when we say the word mushroom, but in fact, most of the organism exists in a, as a large mycelial web that is within the substrate that the mushroom is growing on. A mushroom only forms when the mycelial network is ready to reproduce. You can think of the relationship between mycelia and its mushrooms to be analogous to the relationship between trees and their flowers. There are two major groups of mushrooms, basidiomycetes and ascomycetes. Basidiomycetes, like this portobello here, are far more common. Basidiomycetes, in turn, can be grouped into agarics and polypores. Agarics have this typical mushroom shape with the cap and the stem, whereas polypores are shelf mushrooms. Ganoderma apelantum is a polypore. Keep in mind that this tree that I've made contains a lot of simplifying assumptions, and in no way would it satisfy a rigid taxonomist. However, it does contain all of the major groups, so you should be able to use it to roughly group any mushroom that you find outside. Ganoderma aplanatum is one of the most common of all mushroom species. It grows in all of North America, as well as in Europe and Asia, and it displays a diverse array of morphologies. Some look like this, some like this, some like this. The top of the shelf may be shiny and white like mine with a little bit of algae, or the top of the shelf may be brown and dusty and covered with spores from a Ganoderma above it. The spore surface is white, but this white flesh can be scratched away to reveal the brown spore flesh underneath. This feature has earned Ganoderma the nickname of artist conch, for obvious reasons. Ganoderma is one of the most long-lived of all polypores. Its flesh is very hard and woody, and it can grow annual rings that last for several years. My guess is that this mushroom is over a decade old. So, the shelf was quite easy to make. I just screwed the mushrooms into the back of a piece of wood, and now I'm going to mount it to my wall. Thanks for watching my video, and if you want to see more, click here to subscribe.